tis the season when it seems all some families want for Christmas is a bit more wattage. houses that have the extra twinkle to their tree, more deck to their halls. If you didn't know better, you might think Christmas was a celebration of the electric light bulb itself. But those who are especially festive are not the only people passionate about light. Turns out this year, light and light bulbs are at the heart of a burning debate. I believe in liberty for light bulbs. <laughs> GOP presidential hopeful Michelle Bach, along with other conservatives, have been pointing to the incandescent light bulb as a symbol of government meddling. It all stems from a law signed by George W. Bush in 2007, requiring that our most popular light bulbs be at least 25% more energy efficient starting next year. But conservatives complain those standards render the lowly old-fashioned orb obsolete, restricting consumer choice. The conference report is adopted. But this weekend, Congress pulled the funding day. to enforce that law, giving the incandescent the a temporary reprieve. But the fight is far from over. The efficiency standards are still law. And fans of Thomas Edison's finest know the switch to more modern bulbs is only a matter of time. There's a pushback from a lot of people who say, I'm sitting in my living room. I want a warm, comfortable light. I want it to be, and that's the word they use, warm. The earliest lamp that Edison made actually looked like that. David Delar is a lighting engineer and historian who has a bit of a crush on the incandescent. Even though it gives off more heat than light, Edison's fuzzy filament has filled our homes with a glow that became the standard for more than 130 years. Its first real challenge came from the compact fluorescent bulb, but that didn't go over too well. If you take an incandescent lamp out of someone's socket and you put in a compact fluorescent lamp that doesn't have the right color, even though it's more efficient, they're going to say, what have you done to my light? And they are saying that. And they are saying that. In the days Edison was fine-tuning his invention, most of the world was lit by gas, essentially fire. In fact, it was always that way. From campfires to candles to kerosene lamps, the color of flame was the light of our lives. What Edison finally captured in 1879 was that same light in a bottle, or in his case, a vacuum tube. It's, it's very easy to look at a lamp now, probably rightly, as an almost purely technological artifact, made by machine, maybe even assembled by, by machine. The exact opposite is the case with these early lamps. Virtually every aspect of these devices had to be uh, built by hand. Mark Gruther is the curator of industry at the Henry Ford Museum outside Detroit, where Thomas Edison's lab has been recreated down to the tiniest detail. It wasn't just a bulb, it wasn't just a lamp, it was wiring, conduits, uh, switches, fuses, generators. But of course the, the lamp is the most visible part of it. It was what most people were interested in. But even after Edison's invention electrified parts of lower Manhattan, the rest of the country didn't have the budget for bulbs. In fact, it wasn't until after 1910, almost 30 years later, that using light bulbs became cheaper than gas. So the, the gizmo becomes a commodity. Correct. That's happened with every other lighting technology. It's been introduced, it's very expensive, and you simply wait enough and long enough, and the price comes down. Which is where light bulb manufacturers are right now having to change the public mindset from the $1.99 disposable idea of lighting to the $25 a bulb light that's more like an appliance. You know, you might install a light bulb in your foyer when your kids are born, and that light bulb will still be in there working no problems when the kids go off to college. Ed Crawford heads up the North American Lighting Division at Philips, the world's largest lighting company. This is a compact fluorescent. Now, a lot of people don't like compact fluorescents. Because like the rest of us, items. he watched that first jump from incandescence to those energy efficient bulbs with a bit of a cringe. Some of the early compact fluorescent products, they were not ready for prime time. They buzzed, they had lousy color, they made everything kind of grayish, you know, green. Edison's glowing filament gave off nearly every color of the rainbow, especially reds and yellows. And duplicating that isn't easy. What are we in now? What is this? This is, this is white light. This is a warm, balanced light. It 
Phillips's Daniel Blitzer says that although we see white light as one color, it is in fact many. So the light changes. And too much of any one is uncomfortable. It goes mostly blue. Whether it's blue or vivid green. Ugh. This is a particularly unhappy color for people. <laughs> but perhaps the most important is red. Too much of it is, well, Martian. But for humans, not enough red can be disastrous. But if you have no red light, nothing bounces off the red pigments. It only bounces off the blue of your veins. And that looks Awful. eerie, <laughs> does it not? Yeah. The solution for Philips is a bulb that just won a $10 million prize from the Department of Energy. While it may look like those orange bug lights of old, this is an LED you know, most that Philips says all but shape. replicates the warm all glow all of the really incandescent. The this light bulb does everything the consumers used to, except it uses 9 watts instead of 60 watts. That's only 9 watts? This is only 9 watts. If I take one of these fins off, you can see what's inside. And these are the LEDs. So you see six LEDs right there. There's six in each of these chambers. And when he flipped the switch, so there's, there's two colors that you'll see here when you, when you turn this on, and it's kind of amazing. Oh, it's blue. And through having this lens that we put over the blue, we get that warm white light that we're used to. It's really remarkable. It's almost like a magic trick. This is my little experimental workshop. Where but I it still see. has its critics. Howard Branston, it's for one. He knows a little something about light. He was the engineer who made Lady Liberty shine in just the right way. So okay. I threw together all of this stuff, you can see... He took us out to his garage, where he set up an experiment. A candle, he says, gives off a nicely rounded curve of light. It is full. There's no gaps, there's no peaks. With a lot of yellows oh, and a lot of reds. There it is. And the old-fashioned 60-watt incandescent is almost there. identical. You can see all the red that's there. And what about that Phillips masterpiece? Much to his surprise, it did pretty well. Although Howard isn't ready to switch just yet. Very weak in the red. Because in the, so in the incandescent, almost this whole area then would be red as opposed to this yeah, that's right. part that's dropped down. The market for just the right replacement is huge. Some 4.7 billion sockets are in the U.S. alone. <laughs> Who says you even need a socket anymore? With LEDs, the possibilities are endless. This is a really exciting new thing where we have integrated LED lights behind fabric panels. Like auto shows with cars of the future, there are now lighting exhibits with lamps of the future. But what started it all remains close to our hearts. Edison's incandescent revolutionized our lives. But much like the flickering candle, the incandescent bulb will inevitably succumb to the winds of change. It's the nature of technology, right? It has a lifetime, a start and an end. It's time to end.